How you doing, man? I'm uh, I'm doing, man. I stayed up till 3 a.m. last night. <laughs> Why? I was drawing. Okay. Drawing landscapes. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Does that usually happen at 3 a.m.? Uh, lately, a little bit more. I don't know if you know this, that uh, I've been working on a house. Mm-mm, I didn't know that. So, yeah, our family's building a house, so I'm, like, designing the stuff. Okay. And it's become, like, a, quite obsessive, I would say. Do you Do you think you have an obsessive personality? I think for sure. If something, like, grasps me, mm -hmm. then it can take me away for sure. Like, mm -hmm. I could probably spend my whole day just on nothing but my iPad on the on SketchUp. Mm -hmm. um, but I know uh, that's probably not the best use of my time. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. that. Um, I ask that because I've noticed, um, obviously, there's a lot of type of people, right? But just to kind of simplify it, there's like obsessive people and then people who can live in moderation um for me personally like i don't do very well with moderation i mean there's pros and cons right but um i think you need those both types of people because i think obsessive people can or yeah they can channel that energy towards really positive projects um that affect a lot of people I don't know. Right. I think it's a double-edged sword. What's uh, yeah. up, guys? Welcome to Unhooked, <laughs> episode two. two. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Such a, just out of nowhere. <laughs> That's funny, man. S so, obsession, right? Obsession. Obsession, yeah. I think it's definitely a double-edged sword. Um... Because you kind of, you obviously all the, you know, you think of like Elon Musk or like, oh, it's funny, I watched mm -hmm. a short of the NVIDIA CEO talking about how much he works. He said he works, you know, seven days a week from like 9 a.m. to 5, uh, sorry, 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. or something like that. And it's like these people who are at the top, like they're obsessed with their work. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it, it takes obsession to get there. Um, mm -hmm. I think when when you do it i mean you can do it from from obsession from like uh, you genuinely are just you love it so much you're just infatuated like obsessed with it uh, i right. think another uh, it can also be you know to the the mental health from the mental health perspective maybe it's not that healthy quote unquote but it's like I don't know when you're working on something that's like you know bigger than you it's like mm -hmm. the question i think becomes like is it is it worth sacrificing your own your own health for the collective good and i think right. like that's what these ceos these big these big um you know visionaries do i agree i will say though we all have different recovery times as well, right? Um, I think that that's true physically and mentally. I mean, physically, I've always been like, I need longer recovery times. Like, my athletic friends, like, they work out one day, they're not sore the next day, and they can go again, right? But for me, it, it's not like that. But when it comes to the mental side of things... I mean, I've burned out for before for sure. So I definitely have my limit like everyone else. But um, I, I just love work, man. Like, And I think also people have a, a negative kind of connotation towards work. But I mean, from an artist's perspective, my work is practice, right? I like to practice my piano. I like to work on my craft, on my, on my software, on the computer. Um, that is work, right? But I'm, I, to me, work is more of mastering my craft. And I just really enjoy that. I think to an artist, work is more like play, right? 
you yeah i mean well, that's I that's a good way to put it it's it's funny right you, you don't say you work the piano you play the piano you play <laughs> instruments that's, because that's a good point. as soon as art becomes practical then it becomes productive in the sense of like dead and cold and mm-hmm. soul sucking in that sense i would say you know there's mm. a certain warmth to the creative expression where it's like you you don't do it because it's like good for you or productive for you necessarily mm-hmm. you do it because it brings you into that state of like joy and of just being in in harmony with mm-hmm. with the universe i would say because in that moment you're fully immersed in whatever mm-hmm. you're doing and you know it's like you know things like music they don't have a meaning per se they don't have a meaning and yet we feel these emotions and we feel these things well up inside of us when we listen to something beautiful <clears throat> right you know i i was gonna bring that tweet up to you you posted like music doesn't have meaning or something do you remember what you posted yeah 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 yeah, so that post, um, I commented on it, and I, I kind of shared my experience with dancing, right? Like, my, for a long time, um, I would always, like, go to parties with, with, with my parents and stuff, but I was always the kid that would just sit um, on the chairs, eat the food, because the food was good, but, like, i just see everyone else dancing and, and having a good time, but to me, that never that idea or that activity really never made sense. I was like, why do people like enjoy that? Like, I enjoy listening to the music, but it never, for me personally, made me want to like move. Right? Um, I guess I was more like analytic on like listening to it. I I I was, it was a different kind of listening. Um, but you know, fast forward to college, I I took a a hip hop course or like a dance dancing class and that changed my perspective on it i mean i i after that class i was like i understand why people dance like for me at least what my conclusion was that it was just a an outlet or a way to to express in a way that language can't right language is a powerful tool but it also has its limitations and so i think that's where art comes in because, um, I mean, from a from a musical perspective, right? I mean, it does it doesn't matter even if there's a language barrier, right, with other human beings or or from a different um, culture. It's it's like that's one way we can still connect if if we can all groove to a, a type of music and stuff. That's a form of connection, right? And and um, from a from a dancing perspective, um, I think it's, I mean, I think it's the same thing. It, it's, it's just, uh, in a kinetic form, right? You, you, you get to actually like move, move your body, express it differently. Um, but for me, I, I would say the key, uh, takeaway was expression and connection. That's, that's what I got out of, um, that class. Yeah. Rhythm. Rhythm is really the the language of the universe. Right? Sound, frequency, frequency mm-hmm. vibration, like whatever, you know, on and off, zeros and ones. <laughs> Even a computer, right? Just zeros and ones. It's a it's a rhythm in that sense. That's so I, weird, but true. <laughs> um, I think it's it's like when we become in practical life so like so entranced is so hypnotized in the hypnosis of the the world of you know language of verbal language uh, verbal communication you know linguistics Mm -hmm. that it's easy to forget that you know most of life actually happens outside of the linguistic realm where it has nothing to do with words mm. and it's 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 a 
experience that you can't quite describe, but we can only do our best to describe consciously with mm -hmm. words. But a lot of the mm -hmm. times we forget that these words are only descriptions, only pointers, only, you know, the finger to the moon, but mm -hmm. not the moon itself. But we are so like, mm -hmm. become so attached to words and meaning you know, from those words that we think it's, we, we de develop this kind of like illusion that it's the only reality that's real. Mm. Yeah, I mean, again, language has its pros and cons. Um, I would say that's true. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm trying to see how I can articulate that. I think art is a is a great way or a great tool to express, right? In a way that language can't, right? For example, um like uh, an actual like painting, right? A painting um is a form of communication or or expression, right? And you've heard the the phrase a picture is a thousand words right um sometimes a picture can can capture an idea better than words perhaps right um but then also the beauty of art is that there's also interpretation right that's where um some dialogue can happen as well because i may interpret the art piece differently than you do right um so i think art does very well in that side of things bringing it back to language though i think in order for us to function together and as a society there does need to be some sort of like how do i say this we can't all just like have our own version of languages maybe variation sure but I think we all do need to be fundamentally on the same page or otherwise we, we start to get like confused. Right. Um, Cause I think language is more of a tool to, to communicate ideas, to work together. Right. It's an efficient tool to exchange ideas. I feel like that's um, where language excels. But it has a different purpose than than art, perhaps. Right. I mean, language is kind of here so that we can understand what we mean when we communicate, right. and the, the place for common ground. Right. Right. Um, you you said. Um, <clears throat> oh, what is it that you said? The first part. Art is a thousand words. Art is a good way to communicate. Oh, ideas. I don't know. Mm -hmm. the, the interpretation aspect. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's so interesting noticing the shift in myself over the past few years because mm. I was very, you know, <laughs> productive minded, practical minded. You know, if it's not mm -hmm. practical, it's fucking useless. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> if you're not optimizing for efficiency, then like, what are you doing? You know, you're wasting, wasting time. time. Yeah. Like, God. <laughs> but that was a reflection of, of my own impatience right, with myself, mm. with the world, with, it reflected a, a relationship to myself. And what art really, you know, I started to, uh, I've started to see and I can't stop seeing anymore is that like everything is art, you know, I'm starting to do things like photography, videography, and you just like the 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 extraordinary lies all in the ordinary, and you just take a simple object and you you capture it, and it 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 it, it speaks something that words just cannot. <laughs> That's so true, um, man. And just <clears throat> to me, it, it's been a shift for myself, but I think. Our culture in general, you know, has a well. It is a it is an obsession with, with you know, practicality, efficiency, and 
productivity. You know, when I was like obsessed with self improvement, productivity was like, oh, I have to be productive, productive, productive. You know, mm-hmm. check all these off the checklist and do these habits and make sure I'm on a 90 day streak on no fap and cold showers and <laughs> all that. But yeah, but on a broader scale, like in, you know, it, with what we're doing with technology and with business and all this, right? It's all about productivity. But at the same time, it's this productivity, I think, is really driving us to insanity Mm -hmm. because we're so we're so not here that we're just chronically anxious about the future and you know trying to make it to paradise And this is um, this is enhanced by the trap of social media, mm-hmm. because you know y- you see these you know bodybuilders and fitness models and rich business gurus and mm-hmm. all of this ten the ten k a month. <laughs> yep, and you know you can't help but but think that you're inadequate. You know you have to become like that too. Um, it, it sets you into this chronic state of dissatisfaction and comparison where you cannot just accept your life as where you are now in this moment now. Instead, you're looking towards that future, that, that fitness, being that with that fitness model or, uh, you know, having the body of that bodybuilder or, you know, having the money of the business guru where mm. it's like such it's an insanity with with self improvement uh with with efficiency with optimization you know but but the what we really lack i think on a mass scale right now is a sense of well inner peace and and <laughs> mm-hmm. and just having the stillness to enjoy light and con uh, enjoy life and contemplate it and that's mm-hmm. meditation mm-hmm. and what do you do with art you contemplate it you meditate on it mm-hmm. and i think when you realize that your life is no different from that and that life is not about how much you achieve it's not about you know how much you can optimize and make efficient Mm -hmm. but it's about you actually being in life so that you can revel in its beauty because this is what there is baby (laughs) wow there's a lot there's a lot of good points there i definitely feel that that um the toxic side of of productivity, right? I mean, productivity in itself isn't isn't bad. I mean, we need there there does there's a time and place to be productive, right? Um, however, we've definitely shifted toward this hyper kind of productivity, hyper optimization, like optimize every little second. Like it's gotten to that that extent, right? And productivity is like a big um, niche on on i mean on social media platforms right so it's it's obvious that people are really like in that type of mental state um and i mean that's where hustle culture comes as well right um and i I, i've actually seen this kind of philosophy start to uh poison art truthfully because um I, i i mean i truthfully a lot of mainstream art's just not art to me anymore. I mean, it, it's really just rinse and repeat, which is more of a business philosophy, right? Because you're doing it more for what works so that you have an expected outcome, right? Because you want to make money um, or you rush projects. I mean, Disney's gone crap. Like the movies are just rinse and repeat. And like, it, it just feels like effort, like no effort is being put into it anymore. 
Um, so that's kind of on the film side of things, but like, I'm kind of seeing it from like a, a big perspective, not just music, right? But just art in general, it just feels like the, the, the intention of the art piece is for like profit or, or, or fame or, or, uh, being viral. Right. And what you said is so true. I mean, art is about meditation and, and contemplating and really chewing on these like deep ideas and and seeing what comes out out of it like what maybe like what's your interpretation or how would you express this um and i and art takes time right but because of this really hyper optimized and like fast culture people just want like music for example, from an artist, they want a release every week or just constantly a lot of music put out that never allows for a meditative state to really just sit on one song, for example, per month. I think it just allows that song to really take a more unique shape and form. You can really sit on this idea um, and create something worthwhile versus something that's just decent or mid and then it's it's going to be old news by next week versus something that you create that you put your heart out into it your time your energy um and with no really uh what is it expectation right and then just kind of releasing it to the world and then let it do its thing and it's these deep ideas that come from good art that makes us human that makes us truly pause and contemplate our existence as humans and and you know you know what is meaning what is life what is love all of these things right it's funny because we've been singing about love for you know thousands of years it's like why do we keep singing about it right it's like there's something about it that is elusive and is mysterious and it is awe awe striking that we cannot comprehend with the rational mind mm. and you know when things get when it all becomes about productivity yeah you're right you know the things like the 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 record labels and the execs right it's all about mm -hmm. money to them. It's all about money. Mm -hmm. Just pump out more, pump out more, pump out more. And so mm -hmm. make it a system. Rinse and repeat. You know, mm -hmm. do what works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, it, it, it does feel like that to me. Like lo art is kind of lost. But, right, to, to see it from a more optimistic view, right, the, I mean, I think it's a great time for artists of any type, right? We're, we're in an age of authenticity where we're starving for authenticity, right? And so I think there's opportunity there. If you're willing and brave enough to be authentic and demonstrate that through your art, whatever that craft is, I mean, I, I genuinely believe you're going to win during this time because... That, that's what we're craving. Everyone's just copying each other, right? Mm -hmm. um, and following trends, but no one's talking about how do you create trends or how do you, mm. or how do you um, just, yeah, just, just show rawness of life, right? And not put on this facade on social media. Yeah, completely. It's, we're, we're, we're in the neo-renaissance. But, you know, at least being on Twitter, it just seems like a, everyone's like making an effort to try to become authentic, right? right? But it's a try. It, you can easily, very easily become deceived because mm -hmm. the new guru comes along. Well, in this case, mm -hmm. I think for most people, it's Dan Co. <laughs> right. <on Twitter. laughs> Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he tells them, oh, you can start a one person business. And, you know, right. it's very empowering. It's very empowering. 
and yeah, definitely. you know to a lot of people who are just like who have that deep intuition like i don't want to work a nine to five the rest of my life like what the fuck i don't want to do that mm-hmm. right dan co comes along and uh he tells them you can start a one-person business you can do what you love and make money everyone's mm-hmm. everyone starts doing that but then it's mm-hmm. like <clears throat> There's a lot of inauthenticity, I would say, from trying to be authentic. That's the <laughs> ironic thing, right? And I, I'm not putting, I don't want to put people down. I, I like, you know, we're, we're all trying, right? We're all trying, you know. Um, but, but I'm just pointing out that there is this certain irony of authenticity, right? Of, you know, when you when you try to be when you try to follow a version of authenticity then that's not authenticity because it's dead it's not alive it's not adaptive to this moment it's ideological it's dogmatic right almost no different from you know being dogmatic to a religion or to um opinion whether that's about diet politics whatever um where you're not responding to the moment but you are acting out your past you're basically you're clinging on to the past in order to try to head towards the future um and this is i think this is like the metaphysical trap of hanging on to the past trying to head to the future where we instead we need to dissolve the karma, right? Let go of the past, right? Breaking the chain of karma, as they say in Buddhism, so that we can dwell in this moment here, which is creation. This is the only moment of creation there ever is, and there ever will be, and there uh, and there ever has been. And from this place is where we create. Hmm. But most people are so are stuck in the past, clinging on to knowledge or conditioned beliefs, whatever. Traumas mm. from the past, holding on, holding on in the present, and that's dictating their future. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You yeah you you're saying a lot of good things so first point you were talking about the irony of authenticity right because it's true i i mean i i see it on x right now it's big like people know now that it's like authentic is the way to go about it but and 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 you see it right everyone's talking about like authenticity authenticity but how true is that is that right how are they actually like being authentic or is it because it became like the new trend i guess in a way um because again truly like being authentic i mean it, it should look different to everyone if, if you see the accounts right everyone kind of has a different idea a different way of viewing the world um and so like like what you said following someone's version of authenticity is not authenticity it's just like Right. I mean, I I felt the same way about Dan Coe. Like, I, I used to think, I mean, his way was, like, the only, like, way of seeing it. But I was really just cutting myself short because I have things that Dan Coe doesn't. And Dan Coe, like, vice versa, right? Um, so it just makes more sense. Like, you can get inspiration from other creators. But at, at the end of the day, like, authenticity comes from like within and then being able to um, share that, share that with others. And, and it, it really, I think the key word or not, not word, but key concept to it is, is vulnerability. Right. Um, and, and bravery. Cause it, you need, you need both. If you're going to be authentic online, then it requires, bravery because it, it, it's it's hard <laughs> it's hard to be vulnerable actually express what you're thinking your opinion um and 
even in real life i mean I, that's what i've been i've been trying to merge i don't i i i just hate the idea of like the online world and and the real world like i'm like no let's just focus on the real world and then let social media be kind of like a, a reflection of that or a mirror so i've been trying to focus more on that that that's an obstacle that i'm currently going through right now uh, but i feel like i've tapped into my authentic self right it's a journey but i've definitely tapped into i feel a lot more comfortable in my skin but only with certain people and then also when i go out in the real world it, it's a lot harder right um it requires more bravery is is what i'm saying right and especially because i, I have a background of being a people pleaser um so it's almost like this this kind of like comfortable thing for me when when i'm in in real life and having a conversation and something and like i'll kind of maybe try to filter something out or 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 not express what i actually think and then the, um kind of fall into that conditioning again so i'm trying to work out of that and just be more brave but of course in a civilized way i i would never want to like you know like start something just just because uh but i do i do believe in freedom of speech i do believe in being able allowed to express your ideas opinions um and so yeah i i, I definitely have been focusing on that in real life um there's another point i wanted to talk about you mentioned holding on to the past right so there there i i definitely hear your point i mean it's definitely challenged some of my ideas but i do see value in the past because i do believe it does propel you forward um for example i mean you said even trauma right like at least for me that that's helped me kind of heal in a way but i it is letting go of the past though it's it's not about staying there for sure but it's about like from from my perspective it's about um kind of immersing yourself in the past a lot of like reflection um and then kind of learning from it and going on to the next thing i don't know for me in my mind it, it's I, I I would say I prioritize the present moment, but I kind of navigate between past, future, and always come back to the present. Like I, I try to always be like 80, at least like 80% present because I, I, I do agree with that. I mean, present is the most important tense i would say and, it, and it's sad that so many people are missing out on life for that they're always either living in the future in anxiety or in the past in regret and they're just missing the now the, the what, what's actually happening right now and that's truly like if you think about it the past at some point was the present and then the future same thing at some point will be the present it, it's always the present it's what it's what's moving forward well this brings me to an interesting point because you know this co this concept of being in the present can become very confusing mm. um because it, it becomes uh, you know when you get more into the med meditation mindfulness spirituality stuff and you know you hear how you know you have to be present then you start trying to be present, right? You're in the present moment. You can never not be in the present moment. Um, and then your mind starts wandering off to the future or to the past. And then you start saying to yourself, stop it. God damn it. Come back to the present. <laughs> right? Yeah. So so that that is the trap of, of that, you know, concept, that term of being in the present. I would mm. say, you know, the way I would describe it is that being in the present is not a renouncing or, or, or letting go. It is a letting go of the past, but it's not a pushing it away of the past or it's not a pushing away of the future because the future and the past, like you, you're thinking of the future in the present. 
right. and you're also creating the past in the present. Yeah. Based on the present stories, you're continuing to tell yourself in the present moment, right? And you can change that. So all being in the present is is just having that awareness of in this moment, mm -hmm. what is the story that is going on inside my head, whether that's of of the past or of the future, and from a detached state from the story, rather than being identified with it as this is who I am, you uh, you see it. As, as what it is, and then you can decide, okay, is this a story that, uh, you know, is empowering me, is supporting me towards what I want to create right now in my mental state, right, in, in my life, is this what I want to nurture, right? And we're not pushing it away, obviously, but we're just noticing it, and and that's really what all being present is right i think it can become very confusing um because you you start to be like oh the the future is bad the the past is bad when when that's not the case and I, I you know certainly i fell into this trap when i was earlier on in the kind of you know you might say spiritual journey mm -hmm. i mean the spiritual journey never ends it never starts right. either but uh <laughs> <laughs> that's why words can't describe it <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude that's a good point i never really thought of it that way but you really in a way you don't escape the present um you can you can come in and out of the present right due to like what you said awareness right or where you put your focus so if you're focusing on the future you're planning for the future right you're planning for the future in the present and then if you're reflecting on the past, same thing, you're, you're reflecting, but you're, you're in the present moment. Um, and it's, it's more about awareness, right? Bringing that awareness forward. And for me personally, gratitude has been a really good way for me to ground myself or, or, or bring that awareness forward in the present, really just seeing things around me, appreciating the little things, right? Or, or an interaction or a dinner with my family, like those things bring that awareness a lot stronger of like, wow, like the beauty of life, right? Like just this immense gratefulness for life. Um, but what was my main point with that? Uh, yeah, it's just awareness, awareness of the present, right? Versus being in the present. You you can't actually like right escape uh, escape the present. You can't like I mean, it's it's not like a science fiction movie, right? We can actually physically go back into the past or or back into the future, right? Back in the future. Back to the future. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. You you articulated that concept well. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Even this is the present. This is. And the other thing, right, is that silence is okay. A mm -hmm. lot of times, we're afraid of silence. You know, even mm -hmm. on a podcast episode like this, you know, you know those like you don't want to. You're like if someone stops talking oh it's silent mm -hmm. i gotta jump in mm -hmm. you know what i mean <laughs> or in a conversation in right? a conversation happens we're scared of these pauses and these silences but the more comfortable you can get with the silence right because that that's where mindfulness happens right you notice you start noticing right when when a conversation suddenly falls silent you start noticing all the thoughts going on in your head mm -hmm. right and, you know, you may instinctively want to react and jump in and add something just to break the silence. But sometimes if you just sit with the silence, right, you, you notice things about yourself and the way you think about other people and the way they think that you would otherwise just be so caught up in your own world that you do not have that you cannot have the the capacity to receive 
And I would really say that you develop your intuition through this silence, right? And the easiest way to start practicing is something as simple as silence, you know, during a conversation, it might be awkward, right? But notice it, right? It's like, you're in your head, you're like, holy shit, like, uh, this is awkward. Right? <laughs> That's what it all feels these thoughts like start coming right? up. But this yeah. is the root of self-awareness is when you start noticing them without, without, you know, without, you know, a knee-jerk reaction to try to like get rid of it. Mm -hmm. That's a good point, man. Th it reminds me because that that's something that I continue to work on. I've gotten better at it in real life, um, but it was something I struggled with a lot. Um, and at my old job, um, I, I had a close relationship with uh, my coworkers and my my boss, right? Um, and I remember this one time I, I was just in that habit, like it was just me and my boss and we were having conversations and stuff, but, but it would like at moments it would die out, right? The conversation and it was just silence. Right. But it, it was, it's just interesting because for him, silence seemed to be a very comfortable thing for him. Like you can just tell in his body language, like he was, he was chilling with the silence. But for me, I was just like, do I say something? Do I jump in? Um, think of a topic. Think of a topic. Um, um, healthy food. Um, so what do you eat? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, it, it's just, um, and I was a more, more anxious. I mean, I'm still anxious, but I, 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 I guess I've, I'm trying to learn how to cope with it healthier or in a healthier way. But I was a lot more anxious back then. And those silences drive me crazy, bro. <laughs> Um, I, I wanted to say, do you think that the TikTok, TikTok vacation of social media, right, has played a role in this discomfort in silence? Because it's just, we're constantly like mm -hmm. scrolling, right? And, and just getting that next dopamine mm -hmm. hit, right? Or, or like we never allow silence mm -hmm. to occur, right? We mm -hmm. we just want to distract, distract. Mm -hmm. Because when silent occurs, those thoughts get loud, right? Mm -hmm. The amplified mm -hmm. is what you're, what yep. you were, kind of pointing out. Um, so I feel like in real life when we're having conversations and stuff, right? We never allow silence to happen. It's it's either a what, what right you jump in or, or you try to say something or you crack a joke or whatever right or b starts everyone just pulls out the phone and just hops on social media and then they'll find a funny video and it's like haha look at this right um that's at least from that's that's the common thing i've kind of seen um, but regardless, it never allows for the silence to occur. Like we're, we just don't, don't just sit there. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The constant overstimulation from social media, it's, well, it's distraction, you know, your it's a way to, to numb and to distract our, ourselves from our inner world, you know, 24 hours of the day, you know, mm -hmm. we've become, because of all this stimulation, because of all the convenience of te technology, because of, you can order food with, you know, five taps on a screen, because you can, you know, when you're bored, you can tap twice and be on TikTok or social media, Instagram, that mm -hmm. we are literally, because of all of our tech, we are externalizing our energy we're externalizing our power and i would even i would say this power this energy mm -hmm. is the most sacred currency we have mm -hmm. because what are you without your energy in the sense of you know where you where you place your energy determines who you are how you feel who you become and and you know and what you do, it, 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 where you place your energy literally determines like every facet of your human experience. Um, and the way we devalue it, you know, whether that's through, you know, the, 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 
the che- cheapening of you know intimacy of sex uh mm-hmm. of you know the, the way we just binge on junk food and this is the norm for every day mm-hmm. you know just hop through drive through or get food delivery where everything is cheapened everything's mm-hmm. just a hit of dopamine everything's just a quick hit so that we can feel something so that we can you know because god forbid we have to sit in silence with our thoughts <laughs> it's too miserable to do that we need we need to be on something you know notifications constantly if you don't check your notifications and you open another app if you don't open another app then it's time to oh, let's buy some things right mm-hmm. just this constant unpresent completely reactionary driven Mm-hmm. way of going through life where everything is externalized and you know the moment you start to realize this and it clicks for you you're like holy shit like i've been giving all of my power away i've been giving all of my mental spiritual well-being to a phone to social media to junk food to to all of these things outside of me. And I keep looking for my salvation. I keep looking for my happiness. I keep looking for my purpose. I keep looking for my meaning. I keep looking for my worthiness Mm -hmm. in things outside of me. And you can keep playing this game, but it just goes round and round and round and round and round in circles Mm -hmm. until you make that realization to break the chain and uh, see I, I love this because it connects to the you know the buddhist and uh, as well as as taoist philosophy well the buddhist one the wheel of suffering right mm-hmm. um in taoism there's this illustration by uh Zhuangzi. i don't know if you know him but Mm-mm. you know the wheel right this is the wheel it spins and it spins and and it spins in Buddhism, you can say it's the the wheel of suffering, right? The cycle of samsara. To the normal person, normal person is stuck on this wheel, going up and down, up and down, up and down, around and around. And when you make that realization, you realize you're not the wheel. You're the center of the wheel. You're the pivot. You're the point in which the wheel rotates. But the point in the center never moves. But it sees everything. Mm. Think about the wheel on your car, right? It would not work if there was not something in the center as the, what you might call the, the substance, allowing the spin to occur right. I totally just lost my train of thought that's okay we can sit in <laughs> silence yeah Okay, so the f- I, got a I, I, I agree with what you said about what's up? Yeah, finish your stuff. I got a couple of minutes. For sure. Um, we've devalued our energy. I think fundamentally that's that's the root problem, and that's also what connects all of us as human beings, right? Um. Because how we, like you said, how we use our energy is how we create, right? That That's our, like our most powerful, um, what's the word? I think attributes the word, but I'm not fully sure. But it's like the, uh, it, the, the uniqueness of a human being, right? 
we have this power to create. I mean, you don't see any other animal in the world like, like yeah, I guess they create, but but we've created buildings, right? We've created cars, we've created, um, we create music, right? Um, but that all of us need to use our our energy to create something grand, right? Um, and so to me, when I see our society all just, you know, just cheapening their energy and just giving it away, like to on the phone, right on social media, just scrolling, just it's just not a fulfilling way to to just release all your energy. Sure. I mean, if you want to spend a little bit of time there, it's right. But it's like when I, I see it problematic, when everyone's just willingly just giving away all that energy and I'm just like y'all are all unique like like if you're really like about sports for example right you could spend that energy practicing drills on like basketball right or 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 your shooting form right and and that's contributing to to a skill or to a craft right uh same with music right or even a doctor a lawyer like it doesn't matter what but at the end of the day, it all requires like effort and energy. Um, and I just feel like we've all not all, but like a lot of us have just devalued that that currency. Right. I mean, why why are all businesses fighting for attention? Right. Attention is is. Is a, a form of bigger art. than money. Yeah, it is. It is bigger than money. Absolutely. Um, time, energy, or, I mean, to me, y you got to value that first, and then money comes into the equation after. Um, otherwise, I mean, I, I have family members who are very, like, uh, what's the word? Stingy? <laughs> and And to me, it's like, no, I don't, I don't care about, like, a, a price tag right I, I care about what the money can do for you or how it can buy you time right buying you time is a tricky kind of you can't actually buy time back but what it really means is just liberating time in your schedule right kind of delegating tasks working as a team it's a different kind of concept but my, my point is you got, I feel like you got to value your own time your own energy first and then after everything else starts to to fall into place. Yeah. So I think I think we'll end off here. Just uh, I just wanted to respond to one last point that you made about, you know, it's us humans that we make cars and skyscrapers and pyramids and mm -hmm. iPads and iPhones and computers. <laughs> And everything. why can we make these things is because these er, everything that has been created started started here from the mind's imagination, something abstract, you know, totally not physical, mm -hmm. started from the internal. And that internal energy was placed towards a vision. Mm -hmm. And that vision manifested itself externally. What majority of people are doing nowadays is focusing on the external, hoping to satisfy the internal. Mm -hmm. But that process is reversed. Yeah. So I think we'll end it there. Um, follow me and Alex on Twitter. Link will be in the description. Anything else you want to plug? I just dropped a, a EP randomly last week so you you guys can listen to that it's a it's a video game ep inspired by um it's like a cyber cyber punk kind of like corrupt society type of vibe it was just it was fun to make cool bro send that link over i'll post it yep sounds good and give it a listen all right well i hope you enjoyed this episode um i really enjoyed this one this was a good talk man this was a good talk enjoy the rest of your day guys we'll see you next time see ya peace out